The Aorus FI27Q-P from Gigabyte offers some impressive specs for a gaming monitor. Let's find out if it's worth it for the price in this monitor review. The IPS panel is 27 inches with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and runs with a 1440p resolution and matte finish. It's got a 165Hz refresh rate and a 1 millisecond response time, although that is MPRT rather than grey to grey. Combined with adaptive sync, it's got quite a few features for gaming. In order to run the monitor at 1440p 165Hz, you'll need to use DisplayPort. I confirmed HDMI is limited to 144Hz, which makes sense as this is the limitation of the HDMI 2.0b specification. I tested with both Nvidia and Radeon graphics, and found that my Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti would work with G-Sync compatible mode with DisplayPort, but not HDMI. My RX 5700 XT on the other hand worked with FreeSync with either DisplayPort or HDMI, but you might as well stick to DisplayPort to get the full 165Hz refresh rate. With DisplayPort in use, the FreeSync range was reported as 48 to 165Hz, and as it's got FreeSync Premium, it's also got low frame rate compensation. Gigabyte list that the monitor has support for 95% of DCI-P3 coverage. I tested using the Spider 5 and it reported 92% of DCI-P3, 100% of sRGB, 83% of NTSC, and 88% of Adobe RGB. Gigabyte list it with a 350 nit brightness. However mine was a fair bit higher than this at 451 with 100% brightness. The contrast ratio was specified as 1000 to 1, however I measured mine at 830 to 1. Granted this was with the default 50 out of 100 contrast setting, so you could tweak that. By using DisplayPort version 1.4 they're able to offer high bitrate 3, so 1440p at 165Hz but also with 10 bit colour at the same time. Other 1440p 165Hz monitors I've tested lately, like the MSI MAG 272CQR or ViewSonic XG270QG go to 8 bit. The monitor gives you three response time settings in the overdrive menu. Picture quality, balance, and speed. I had a hard time telling the difference in the UFO test, but it was clearer when swapping between the lowest and highest mode. I thought speed looked the best. I don't have tools for measuring response time, however check out the hardware unboxed review of this monitor for details on that. According to Tim, speed mode gets us down to 6 milliseconds gray to gray from 9 in the slowest mode. Viewing angles were fine regardless of angle. The specs note that it's good for up to 178 degrees both horizontally and vertically. The bezels aren't too thick. I measured them at around 1cm on the sides, but I honestly can't say I really care too much as I hardly notice them once I get into a game. But that would be more of an issue if you had more than one side by side though. Backlight bleed looked fine. Just a small glow patch detected by the camera in this worst case scenario. I couldn't see it with my own eyes though, but this will vary between panels. It's not all just about the panel though. The stand feels solid as it's all metal with a matte black finish. It felt sturdy and the design just gave it a premium feel. I liked the handle on the top which made it easy to move around. There's a hole in the stand to help with cable management along with an area to route them through on the bottom of the screen. In terms of adjustments, we've got minus 5 to 21 degrees of up and down tilt, minus 20 to 20 degrees of side to side swivel, 0 to 13 centimeters of height adjust up and down, and it can be pivoted 90 degrees, though it only turns in one direction rather than both. The stand connects to the back of the panel without any tools required. There's a little pin connector here because the stand has RGB lighting and needs power. There's also a 100mm vase mount if you want to attach the panel to a different stand or monitor arm. There's a single joystick under the center of the screen for on-screen display navigation, and this also acts as the power button. I didn't have any issues using it, and found quite a few useful settings in the OSD, such as options for picture in picture, picture by picture, automatic power off timeout, disabling the front white LED, removing blue light, along with the usuals like brightness, contrast, and various preset profiles. If you get the OSD Sidekick software from the Aorus website, you can manage all of this and more through Windows instead of using your mouse. You just need to connect the included Type-B USB cable to your PC for it to work. This also installs RGB Fusion, which is used to manage the RGB lighting on the back in two separate zones. The OSD just lets you select three modes or turn it off. While in the software, we can customize colors and effects with more control. The lighting was pretty subtle. 
Even at night in a dark room, I didn't think it was too bright compared to others I've tested. I could barely pick it up on camera. As mentioned, it's not only on the back of the screen as these sort of wings, but also on the stand as well. The IO is on the back and faces down. There's a power input on the far left, and no external power brick is needed as it's built in. There's a Kensington lock in the middle, then the rest of the IO is towards the right, and includes 3.5mm headphone and mic jacks with active noise cancellation, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, full-size DisplayPort 1.4, and a USB Type-B port which is used to connect the monitor to your PC, and this allows you to use the other the two USB Type-A ports as a USB hub. The cables included with the monitor are full-size DisplayPort, HDMI, USB Type-B to A for the USB hub functionality and OSD Sidekick software, and a power cable. So the monitor sounds pretty good overall, but how is it to actually use day to day? I normally use a 32 inch 4K monitor as my daily driver for video editing, so swapping to 27 inches at 1440p was a little downsize. Granted, this is the third 27-inch gaming monitor I've tested over the last few weeks. Overall, I thought it looked great in terms of colours. I happily used it for some content creation without issues and thought games looked great. It was nice and bright with notably better response time and less ghosting compared to the VA panel in the MSI MAG272 CQR I last tested, though that one is also a fair bit cheaper. Finally, let's discuss pricing. You can find updated prices linked in the description. At the time of recording, the Aorus FI27Q-P goes for around $550 US dollars. So $50 less than the ViewSonic XG270QG that I recently tested. Honestly, I couldn't really tell you a difference between them while just playing games. The ViewSonic has better response time, but I'm too much of a filthy casual to really notice. The colour gamuts on both are similar, but the Aorus panel is brighter and had a better contrast ratio. The ViewSonic did have some extras like mouse anchors, headphone holder, and optional side doors, and those sorts of features aren't free. Personally, out of the two, given I couldn't really say one looked better to me over the other, I'd save the $50 and go for the Aorus. Oh, and here in Australia, we're looking at around $1,000 Australian dollars, so $200 less than the ViewSonic alternative. There are of course cheaper 1440p 165Hz monitors out there. This is definitely on the more premium side of the price scale. So with all of that in mind, let me know what you thought of the Aorus FI27Q-P gaming monitor down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future tech videos like this one.